I feel like law has a lot of catching up to do. And that's a good thing because it's all improves the efficiency for the law firm owners and also for the clients. This entire process is good for both sides. It will make your life easier and optimizes the process that your clients have to take in order for them to be served completely from beginning to end. Can you walk me through the process from the point of view of the client? I mean, first of all, could you describe to me a typical client for one of your law firms and then how that process works from the client end of things? So let's talk about Lemon Law. Lemon Law is somebody who has usually a newer car, 2017 or a newer car, and it's been having car, been having some issues. You have to take it into the dealership to repair it. And if you if you take it to the dealership multiple times, you may have a claim against the car manufacturer. So what I do is I put up ads and the ads say, hey, if you've been having car problems, then you might be entitled to get paid. And what I do is in my little client generation system is I qualify, ask qualifying questions up front. Hey, tell me about your case. What year is your car, et cetera. I collect that information so that I don't have to require somebody to go in and qualify every single lead. We could qualify usually about 80% of our leads just through that part. If they qualify, great. Uh, let's set up a system to automatically follow up with them and contact them right away to get them signed up. At that point, the next team take, takes over, which is our on client, client onboarding team. For that, it's always information and documents. So let's collect the information up front that is collected in an intake. Those answers are automatically auto-populated in our CRM, which automatically prepares all the discovery and anything that needs to be done on the back end. Second is let's go collect our documents, which is also automated through certain emails and texts, automatically sends them requests for these documents to collect those. It will, it will continue asking for those documents until it's collected. Once it's collected, then it pushes them into our CRM and pushes, pushes them all along to get them through this process as soon as possible. What that CR, looks like, CRM, yeah. can you define that for us, please? Case management software, whatever that kind of keeps tracks of your two parts, your leads to get them signed up. And then second is client sign up to all the way through finishing up serving them fully. But do you use a commercial client management software or is this something that you've developed all on your own? No, you definitely don't want to develop it yourself. It's too complicated. No, definitely. What do you use? A couple of different ones, but the main one that we use right now is HubSpot. That's the most popular CRM in the world. It doesn't have to be for legal. The second most popular one is Salesforce, but there's a whole bunch of popular ones like such as Clio. Um, Lawmatics, all of those, I think, honestly, it gets the job done as long as it's about how you use it, not necessarily which one's the best one. Right so, you, so you have the client upload their information into the CRM? Correct. Either we have uh, people that get in contact, as soon as they're onboarded, as soon as they're signed up, then we get people to go collect that information. And sometimes, even if, it, if, they, if they're not responsive, then we're able to automate that kind of outreach, say, hey, Congrats for being our client. Go ahead and submit your documents here, et cetera. And does a person make a phone call or go see the client or does the client come into the office or is it all virtual? Yeah, we never ideally need to see a client in person. You know, everything, all these things can be requested through email, text. That's part of the scalable. We would never want to do any one-to-one -one interactions. Okay. So the client ultimately gets all of their documentation, their paperwork uploaded into uh the Our crm correct. and what happens at that point uh, a lot of automation takes over so it takes all that information that we collected up front and it prepares a lot of the paperwork for us i would say about 80 percent of the efforts is done through the automation and then the last part is obviously reviewing it to make sure it's good make sure obviously our clients interests are fully maximized and pretty much taken over from that point forward so then what happens does it generate a demand letter Pretty much, yeah. Generates a bunch of documents, things that helps our team to be able to take it over and review it and file it. Does it ever have to go into litigation? Does it ever have to be filed in court? Sure, sure. And even that part, again, a lot of it, a lot of the busy work can be filled out already for you. And then our team just does the review checks, to make sure that it's good, good to go. At some point, somebody who's admitted to the bar needs to show up in court. Correct. If if it goes to litigation. If it goes to litigation, and right. what percentage of these lemon law things end up going to litigation? Not a big percentage, single digit, pretty much. So, if that <laughs> most of it can be done 
before any buddy with a JD after their name actually has to show up in court. Correct. Yeah. You have a very unique way of practicing law. I mean, I've never heard of anybody who practices law the way you do, uh, which is fine. Um, and I'm wondering, what is it that you really like about practicing law? Because you're a very bright guy. You have uh, a mind that works in an incredible way, from at least from my point of view. Um, and I'm wondering what it is about law that you really like, because it seems to me that you could do pretty much any type of business applying some of these same principles. I feel like law has a lot of catching up to do. And that's a good thing because it's all improves the efficiency for the law firm owners and also for the clients. This entire process is good for both sides. It will make your life easier and optimizes the process that your clients have to take in order for them to be served completely from beginning to end. A lot of people that hear these things are like, oh, you know, here comes the new way or this is gonna, or, or they look at the negative aspects of this. But no, I actually, everything for me, my mind works in opportunities. How can we optimize this? Everything is on the positive side of things, improving things, not necessarily breaking anything, just improving. How is actually practicing law met or differed from your expectations? Uh, I don't think it affects it one bit. If anything, it optimizes it, I would say. Because again, you don't get bogged down on the tedious and repetitive stuff. A lot of it, a lot of law could be, is very repetitive if you actually analyze what's being done. So if you can take that off your hands, then let's focus instead, dump that focus into the part that really matters, the art and in the art and the science behind, you know, the legal aspect of, you know, helping your clients win. That's where you will have the highest you know, value for your clients when your mind goes towards those part, not the tedious and repetitive stuff. In the introduction, I mentioned your book, Virtual Law Firm Secrets. I assume that you outline these principles in that book. Yeah, I basically take the top uh, ways to make the biggest impact to be able to streamline your law firm so that you're in control of your law firm and your, your law firm isn't in control of you. So what I found out, I basically, when I started realizing these concepts and applying these concepts for my, for my own law firms and duplicating and not doing for other lawyers and all that stuff, I realized a lot of law firm owners deal with their stressed and overwhelmed because again, they're bogged down with the nitty gritty stuff. What if you could take off all those nitty gritty details of running the day to day and automate it? Or maybe let's try to figure out a way to hire virtual people to be able to delegate those stuff out so that everybody can focus on they're what they're good at, what they enjoy doing most. I think that's where true success for most lawyers is. It's not making the most money. It's not necessarily have the most you know, prestigious job. That's great. Maybe it makes you feel temporarily good. But long-term, your true happiness and true success is comes down to doing what you're good at and what you enjoy doing the most. If you can get yourself to focus on only those things, you will be a happy lawyer and a happy person that will have a big impact for your law firm. So a lot of these things just basically clean up that those other miscellaneous tasks that you, tasks that you don't want to do. So to get you closer to, to working in your desired zone. Lawyer Nation, I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, take a moment right now to subscribe right below and turn on the bell notification to get notified every time I post a video. Because right now I'm posting five videos a week, providing lots of value to lawyers. So click right here to subscribe and to watch the next most relevant video, click right here. Go do it. Go watch it.